Vivo, Gibor presenta El Gigador contra El Nerdo Loco The Internacional Fenómeno Ataca the show! That's all it's gonna be. Rare 90X! Hey, Olivia's back! Look at that! Hey, Olivia's back! You're back! You're right here! You're here! I missed you all so much. Missed you too. Okay, that, that's believable. Welcome to Attack of the Show, TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. I'm Kevin Pereira, Olivia, I'm back. I'm back. I am. I'm back. I missed you guys very much. We are coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Why do you hurt us? Oh, I was off making money so that you can buy fancy things. Okay? Oh, okay. Right? You, you, you like you like your you like your room? You, you know you like your, your fancy little BMW? I, got I just want to play ball, Dad. I don't need shiny things. Yeah. Tell me that when you want to get into an expensive school. Oh. Let's just start the show. Very therapeutic. Children. The road to E3 is paved with emerging tech, and we'll look at some of the motion-controlled gaming you can expect to see in the oh-so-exciting future. Plus, Nestor Carbonell, the immortal Richard from Lost, will be here live in the studio. And just you know, his, his publicist did okay this with us. Mm -hmm. uh, his publicist said that we could physically abuse him until he tells us how the show ends. Yeah. So send us your Twitter questions for him at, at AOTS. And your favorite torture techniques. Let us oh, know. Those are fun. Bamboo shoots. We have a lot here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Allison Hayslip also got a chance to uh, chat with the cast of MacGruber. Yeah! And she extracted some secrets about the latest big screen comedy to come from Saturday Night Live. And then, I know the iPad may be magical and revolutionary, right? Oh, we yeah. love it. Yeah, it's great. Woo! Unless you want to do something like, I don't know, multitask. <laughs> then you're out of luck. <laughs> Unless you watch today's Hack This, we have an answer. We have an answer. Pose a problem, we'll deliver a solution. So, um, we're going into the web hole. Oh, yeah. And the goggles, they don't do anything. Well, that's not how I said the line on Simpsons. You good? I'm good. You good? I'm good now. CBS 4 News in Miami has some breaking news. <laughs> Really breaking news. The injuries are run of the mill. Everything from pulled hamstrings to fractured penises. Injuries <laughs> tend to happen most when people get intimate in unusual places or try unusual things. So consider yourself warned. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, people are cracking up in here. <laughs> we'll be right back. Professional. Broken Wang ain't funny. <laughs> it's not. Mm -mm. Wow. Then you got a de-splint for like a month. Oh. And if that doesn't set right. You can't do the Prayer 90X? That's, you can't. Show him it. Or, What's or Euro Grip. Show him Prayer 90X. Just a little bit. That's all you get. <laughs> That's all you get. For $49.99, you can look like this 17 too. 17 DVD set. All of that. That's it. That's all it is. Different variations. I changed the shoes up. I mixed yeah, it up. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Coming at number four today is the trailer for the next Call of Duty Black Ops. You can oh. go ahead and cheer if you want. Or not. Whatever. I'm not interested in it. <laughs> I don't care about it either. No, I... Here's but the guess thing. what? No. You guys can buy um, fake farms and, and then put them all together and pretend like you have a little land. That's fun. Oh. No, yeah. You guys get excited about that. Speaking you know, of, hold on. I got to check on my watermelon. You Call reminded me. Call of Duty <laughs> Black Ops. And, <laughs> and you guys are like, look where I put my fountain. Oh, and... Put it right there. That's what the real but men are Casey doing. Casey put his fountain in the front. Which Casey, is kind of cool, get to my kingdom and order some quilts. Okay. Fantastic. So for the real, for the real guys out there, Call here's of the Duty. Here's the thing, Olivia. Off. Here's the reason they weren't cheering. I think fans are a little bit nervous about this particular game because Modern Warfare, as gamers know, was developed by Infinity Ward, which mm -hmm. is like the uh, the Beatles of game developers, yes. if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this game was put together by Treyarch, who is evidently like the monkeys of the uh, the Call of Duty oh. universe. Just to go with the analogy, I'm just saying. Just saying. But, but still catchy and fun songs. Great, great, great to and listen great to. Great actors. <laughs> but let me just tell you guys, this trailer will make even the worst game troll excited for Black Ops, okay? We live in a world where seeing is not believing. Where only a few know what really happened. Ready when you are. We 
live in a world where everything you know is wrong. This is it! Go, go, go! I love dramatic trailer lines. That's what a, that's what a trailer is, just so, but dramatic But overly line. dramatic, you know. Yes. What did you have for breakfast, Olivia? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Delicious. <laughs> I know, it's really good when they're milk and cinnamon. That's so good. It's like a little dessert. It's like you have breakfast and dessert on the same bowl. It is. It doesn't matter what the game is, though, by the way. Oh, we're talking about Call of Duty again? Yes. Yeah. No, it really doesn't matter. As long as it says Call of Duty on it, Activision's going to rake in another billion dollars. Uh, I mean, they could do Call of Duty parking enforcement, and, <laughs> and people would still pre-order on Amazon for golden tokens. Oh, oh, you know what I think would sell uh, to the ladies out there huh? and to Pereira? Call of Duty Sex in the City. Oh, yeah. 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 That it, would sell. That it's would something sell. that couples can play together. Yeah. As long as I can shoot the horsey one. <laughs> oh! Mm -hmm. Oh, is that DLC? DLC. I'd pay extra shooter. All right, internet. Today's number three item sees your epic beard man. And raises you one refrigerator. What? Not too bad for a 50-year-old, huh? Actually, 51. What do you want, hon? Over that way, dear. Over here? In the truck? In the truck's good. Uh. Somebody forgot to put the tailgate down! <laughs> Next time, put the tailgate down! <laughs> that sounded like your dad, right? Yeah. They're running out of fetishes on the internet. I think that's, that's what we learned from that. I think that's another testimonial for the, the crazy strong old guy moving company. Oh. <laughs> what, what's their motto? Uh, we'll move your stuff, but bitch about it the whole time. <laughs> Today's number two item is an impressionist of the highest oh. order. Oh, nice. I love Monet, so it should oh. be great. No, no, I mean like an impressionist, like uh, someone who does like voices and characters and... Oh, like Jeff Dunham? Who's that? <laughs> Who's Jeff Dunham? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Jeff Dunham, guys, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Thank you. Thank well, you. Is no. it Jeff Dunham? No, uh, it's an L.A.-based actor, Hunter Davis. He's actually developed a spot-on impression of our favorite wizard. Alastair Crowley? <laughs> No. I don't, I'm trying to, I'm really, I'm watching. trying with you, okay. Life is like a hurricane <laughs> here in Duckburg. <laughs> Race cars, lasers, aeroplanes. <laughs> it's, it's a duck blur, not pony tails, not cotton tails. <laughs> I've actually had the privilege of meeting Sir Ian McKellen. I was that close to him. Squint my eyes, close him, sounds just like him. Yeah. Just like him. Well, McKellen thinks so too. Uh, a while back he posted this guy's video on his Facebook page. Sorry. Uh, McKellen's publicist pa posted this on yeah. his Facebook page. Yes. McKellen doesn't even know what a pager is. So <laughs> no. I don't think he's, he's updating Facebook. his Facebook. No. Oh, and also DuckTales isn't the only theme song that gets the Gandalf treatment. West Philadelphia. I was born and raised. The playground is where I spent most of my days. <laughs> Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool. Shooting some Bieber outside of the school. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. So good. Isn't that really good? He's think, amazing. Yeah, he's really good at it. I think there's only one way. We should have him come in and like read this. the feed. Oh. You guys, that's a great idea, yeah. right? Yeah, get him into the feed. Yeah. Oh, he's not busy, clearly. Just fed. Well, uh, like, let me just say, um, you wanted to know how do you make it more awesome? I think there's one way you can make it a little bit yeah, more yeah. awesome. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, you, you, you gotta mean that uh, it's by adding the music from Lord of the Rings, the best fantasy movie trilogy ever made, right? That's yeah, what that's what, I think yeah, that's what we matter, need to do as well. You think too slow, internet made it. What? I for a cab, when it came near, License plates and fresh, and there was dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this cab was rare. 
I thought, nah, forget it. Your home's in Bel Air. Get that man a wizard staff. Oh, euphemism? No. <laughs> Still ahead, one of the most painful injuries ever seen on Attack of the Show. Yes. Yeah. If you love number two, imagine how amazing number yeah. one is. Today's number one around the night is coming up right of this. It's like menstruation. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Mitchum, the hardest working antiperspirant in America. What, 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 what? How we do this? Number one thing. I I, I know that I'm uh, not looking forward to seeing number one I am. today for the first time in I my am. life. It's, it's it's disturbing. Listen, today's number one item is one of the most upsetting skating injuries we've ever seen. It's so good. <laughs> No, ambulances are expensive. <laughs> Did anything go like inside? <laughs> Dude, it's his ass is like that. In between his ass is balls. Like, <laughs> uh, gooch. Yes. Uh, 911, what's your emergency? Oh, torn gooch. Yep, oh, yep, that was the goochal region. <laughs> you know, the first thing I see is like the friends in the back, when he falls, before he starts screaming, like the friends don't even move. Like there's one guy that's literally like this. They're just totally he's, like, sitting this. there, yeah. He's just like. Yeah. <laughs> like he's still in chill position. He's like, nah, I'm not moving from But the this. moment you hear, oh, blood. You just go, oh. Yeah. That was like. Manstration. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's not good. You know, I, I have to tell you guys, like, up until like a few seconds ago, I had actually no idea. The tank could rip like that. Just yeah. rip. Yeah. And even though it's it's hilarious to watch happen, a rip taint is no laughing matter. <laughs> Did you know that several handfuls of tweens severely injure their taints every year? It's sad, but true. Taint ripping is the fourth leading cause of injury to skaters, right behind nut shots, shin burns, and getting beat up by jocks. It's an embarrassing and painful injury that often goes unreported. But it doesn't have to be this way. That's why we're here to tell you about the Taints for Tykes program. National taint levels are at an all-time low, often leaving those with injured taints sewn together too tightly or, in some cases, replaced with animal taints. We're better than that. You can easily <laughs> donate a portion of your taint at participating hospitals. Taint donation is a short and relatively painless procedure involving six or seven doctors holding you down while forcibly removing the top several layers of skin from your perineum. The operation is performed in a soundproof chamber so as not to terrify the rest of the hospital. When you're done, you won't be able to walk for a few weeks, but you'll easily wheelchair around knowing that you've helped someone with a less fortunate taint situation. Sign up for your taint donation at taintsfortikes.org. Donations are not tax deductible. Silver lining. The story has a happy ending, doesn't it? Mm. Feels good to get back. Yeah. Hey, even the lack of Richard Dean Anderson didn't keep Allison Hayslip from having a three-way with the cast of the new movie, MacGruber. Conversation. Three-way. Hello, MacGruber. SNL's Will Forte brings his easily distracted soldier of fortune from sketch to screen and proves once and for all, he is the ultimate tool. I'm gonna use homemade explosives that I made with my own two. Oh no, no, this better not be some kind of joke. How do you turn this into a full length film? I think a lot of people think that it's just gonna be the sketch over and over and over again. We said <laughs> we're not interested in doing that as much as other people would not be interested in watching that. <laughs> It had really very little to do with the sketch. Yeah. And to create a movie based around this character, this incredibly flawed, hilarious character. How did you know I was wearing a bulletproof vest? You're wearing a bulletproof vest? Awesome. So we stuck him in our version of a, a little 80s action movie, a big 80s action movie. 
Let's move! Were you both so excited to actually don the MacGruber wardrobe? I, I took pictures that day <laughs> on my phone and sent it to all my friends. And why do I have to be you? First of all, you will never be me. And second of all, I forget your question. I sent a picture to my boyfriend and then I immediately regretted it. No biggie, no tip. What are you doing? Get that tip. Okay, you're not sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Yeah. Straight flush. Damn it! I'm gonna turn Washington, D.C. into a pile of ash. Will's performance is, is really dynamic. He's a terrible guy, this MacGruber, and he just messes up everyone's world. I cannot wait to cut off your d and shove it in your MacGruber. This is a different kind of rated R. We sort of really went for it. You definitely did, and it doesn't seem like you guys held back on anything. Yeah, we kept thinking that people were gonna make us take stuff out. I'm a virgin. Not for long. They really know what works, you know. I guess that's part of the fun of it, too, is that they really trust each other as well. You can really do whatever you want to do. We believe the X-5 is now in the possession of this man. He's untouchable. Oh, I'll touch him, rookie. I'll touch him wherever I want. Comedy connoisseurs will love it because there's just no character like MacGruber. He is the dumbest guy ever. What's wrong, MacGruber? You can defuse it, right? Are you kidding me? Look at all this crap. It's like a million wires in here. I'm like a three-wire guy. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, I like this. Can we have a three-way? Mm -hmm. There we go. This feels right. You got it. G4. Yeah. I heard it's really funny. Yeah. So what, what was the, um, what's the, the, the last Saturday Night Live movie you saw? Oh, like a sketch that they turned into a yeah, movie? Yeah. Uh, probably Million Dollar Baby. That was, uh, that, was a, that was an SNL sketch, right? No. Oh. No, and no, not no. that one. Not that one. Okay, still ahead. We're going to look at, at a super lightweight notebook from Aces and Gadget Pod. Hey, stick around. We'll be, what, why are you looking at me like that? I don't know the moon. I thought it was my lips. From Hollywood to Bollywood. Baba Ve Kalamro. Geek Goddess. Hungry Kisho. Candace Bailey is back to feed you. Do it, Rockapella! Woo! I mean, Candace, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Right now, it's time to start off the feed. It is Thursday, May 20th, my birthday, and here are your top stories. Does your TV lack a certain Googliness? Well, Intel and Sony are teaming up with Google for a new smart TV platform. The new tech was announced today at Google's I.O. conference and will use the Android operating system and Intel's Atom chip in new TVs and set-top boxes. The tech basically adds Google search to your TV, allowing you to find recorded shows and upcoming broadcasts, as well as video on the web like YouTube or Netflix. Google expects to ship the first Google TV units this fall, thus taking over yet another aspect of our lives. And because I just love saying Google over and over again, here's some more Google news. Another announcement at the Google I.O. conference was that the next version of Android will run two to five times faster than the old one. That means your phone's apps and web browser will run twice as fast, though phone calls with your mom will stay the same length. Also, Adobe's new version of Flash will finally run on Android. This means users have all access to all the Flash-based games and apps denied to iPhone junkies. The new Android OS is called Froyo because it's not just great mobile technology, it's also low-fat and delicious. And dear God, people really love the iPad. In fact, people love the iPad so much that Apple is now selling more than 200,000 iPads a week. I know. According to All Things Digital, that's more than the amount of Macs being sold. And it probably helps that Apple's finally letting people pay for iPods with cash. Originally, sales were restricted to credit or debit cards to ensure a two iPads per person limit. You couldn't even use a gift card. But Apple revised their policy to allow cash after one customer complained to San Francisco's KGO TV. And now I can start my cash into iPods money laundering scheme. <laughs> And it turns out that comparing your boss to Hitler isn't a great way to keep your job. Go figure. That's a lesson Megan Fox just learned the hard way. 
The actress who smack talked director Michael Bay in the press will not return for the third Transformers movie. I know. According to Deadline Hollywood, her character was dropped for script reasons, but of course, Fox's PR rep says that it was her choice not to come back. Doesn't matter who you believe, though. The job of Frenching Shia LaBeouf is now up for grabs. The rumored frontrunner is Gemma Arterton, who stars in next week's Prince of Persia adaptation. But running across rooftops is a lot different than running from giant robots. I'm Candace Bailey, and you've just been fed. Now back to Kevin and Olivia. Uh, thank you, Candace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now the epic battle between tablets and netbooks continues. OMG, who will win? Find out in today's sketch prawn. <laughs> Asus is known for two things. Uh, I think having computers. An, well, that's okay. Three things: having an easily mispronounceable name and making great netbooks. Yes, and how does this one stack up? Huh? Ever since Asus started the netbook revolution with the EPC, they just keep making it better, like the 1201N. Weighing in at 3.2 pounds and only 1.3 inches thick, this portable powerhouse packs an Intel Atom dual-core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and NVIDIA Ion graphics. In addition, Windows 7 and a 12.1-inch LED display make this a steal of a netbook for 475 bucks. So this netbook is a little larger than yesterday's tablet right here, just a bit heavier, mm -hmm. uh, still really lightweight, um, and it is a little bit thicker, but still. Pretty awesome yep. size. It doesn't necessarily feel too big, um, I have to say. Practically uh, no battery bulge, really, at all. Uh, but you said yesterday that netbooks always feel a little plasticky. Yeah. Um, and somebody on Twitter pointed out they feel that way because they're made of plastic. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you are good. Yes, which makes it more lightweight. Easy, um, Bill Nye. I didn't know you were on the internet. Um, no, the, 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 term, the whole plasticky thing means sometimes they feel cheap. Uh, and this one doesn't suffer from that. Okay, this one actually good. feels pretty solid, pretty rigid, uh, even though it is made of plastic. Nah. Yeah, well, why don't you just say it feels cheap instead of using the word plastic? Because it feels plasticky. There's a difference. Like, you know, like, you know, some, sometimes you feel cheap, but, you know, you're not made of plastic. And you wonder why I have to go away sometimes. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, weird reaction. Uh, it is a, <laughs> <laughs> what were you expecting? Huh. Laughter. Give her the laugh. <laughs> oh, wow, that was creepy. <laughs> That was really weird. Oh. Can, you can, we just, can we just do this whole thing over? Hey guys, can we just... And you wonder why I have to go away sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 12-inch netbook, Olivia. It's, it's weird because my ego makes me think that they are completely laughing genuinely. But my brain knows they're not. <laughs> Okay, it's a 12-inch netbook rather than the 10-inch from yesterday. It does have a, a little more room for everything, like uh, you know, the keyboard is a little bit more spaced out, yes. touchpad, uh, the screen. So, uh, what do you think? Easy to use? I think it's very easy to use. Uh, the keys it's are widely crazy spaced. Down there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a little crazy down there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they're widely spaced. It's immediately intuitive to type on. Uh, the down there that you were referring to being crazy, I think, is the uh, the touchpad, right? It oh, has this... it says it's greasy. It was greasy on the oh, bar. Oh, greasy, yeah. yeah when you said crazy, it's like, I don't know. So what were you guys doing? <laughs> They're like, oh, it's crazy down there with the buttons and the whatnot. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, that, look at that mouse pad. It's crazy. Well, here's the thing. The trackpad does have this greasy. different texture than the rest of the netbook. So it's, it's really nice. You don't lose track of where you are on the actual trackpad. Um, and it supports multi-touch. Most of them have that. Most of them are a little bit, a little bit you know. Sometimes with netbooks, they try to do this flush design where the only thing to let you know that it's the trackpad like is like a design mm -hmm. on the thing. It's not actually raised or textured. Yeah, so this is, this is pretty clear. Um, it doesn't have a touch screen uh, like yesterday's, but the screen does look great and has a better resolution than the Lenovo that we talked about. Now, this is one of the only netbooks that has a dual core Atom processor, mm -hmm. and you can add up to eight gigs of RAM. Yeah. I know, it's a lot. This mm -hmm. one right here has two gigs. So with all of that, this right here, two gigs, is it as fast as it should be? Uh, it's, it's close. Uh, okay. Boot up time is OK. It takes you about uh, 50 seconds from power on to launching uh. into a browser. I know. Uh. Uh, our normal PC Mark Vantage tests were a little slower than we'd want. Um, but he here's the thing. It's a netbook, and you can play Team Fortress 2 on it yeah. at medium quality. Oh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's pretty sweet. OK, this is just as much as yesterday's tablet at $475. Mm -hmm. Uh, that seems like, this seems to, like, I'm looking for one that's a little bit bigger but not too big and this seems lightweight, has all the stuff you'd want in it. Mm -hmm. um, Don't be such a size queen. I think this is a, uh, this will, this will do what you need. I think as this will get the job I've done. I told you I'm sorry. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the girl. There's nothing I can do! Sometimes it's just about, it, this looks prettier. You know? 
When it's bigger. There's a key for every lock, my friends. Four out of five is what we're giving it. That's what small guys say, <laughs> That's Kevin. what we say. That is what Kevin, we say. let me just give you a tip. For, for me, as, your, as a friend of yours, yeah. as a girl, don't say that because girls automatically go, oh, he has a small penis. I whisper that. I whisper just that to say, them just, when just, they ask if it's in. I go, say it. No. Because you're like, and my and key go, is big. Yeah. I'm like, let me try to pick this one. I need some tools. Don't say it anymore. That's it for today's Gadget Prawn, but if you have a gadget you'd like to see us rate, email, are we done? Oh, we're off the air. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Gadget Prawn uh, at G4TV.com is the address if you want us to rate something. Use your internet machine and figure it out. All right. The road to E3 is paved with producers' broken backs and Aww. the dreams of long dead consoles. The Phantom. Oh. Four went out for him? I would. I would. At this year's show, it looks like... Oh, I was just wiping my tear. It's fine. It's not a single tear. The reason why they went back to you because they're they're like they're, he never cries. Maybe that's why you have to just pretend. <laughs> yeah, You're no, like, just... that's it. I'm sad. <laughs> so this year's E3, it looks like everyone is jumping on the Wii bandwagon with motion controlled poise to come out swinging full force. What? With the Electronic Entertainment Expo right around the corner, it's time we get you primed and ready for the newest gaming tech that will change the industry. This year, it's all about motion control, and Microsoft and Sony are going after Nintendo with their own motion tech. Microsoft and Sony both saw how popular the motion control on the Nintendo Wii was, and they didn't want to leave that casual gamer out in the cold in their consoles. The first game changer is Microsoft's Project Natal for the Xbox 360. First shown off at last year's E3, this device promises to change gaming. It's going to allow you to interact through facial features, through movement with the Xbox 360. Project Natal hopes to provide a different experience for both new and veteran gamers. For Project Natal, you don't actually need to hold any controllers like the Wiimote or the PlayStation Move. It's actually a camera that tracks where your body is in relation to the background space. So basically your entire body becomes the controller. But Natal won't be the only new kid on the block. The house of Sony has a new motion controller called PlayStation Move. The PlayStation Move works a little bit like the Nintendo Wii. You hold a controller in one hand and then you have sort of an ancillary controller in the other hand, depending on the game you're playing. And as you move, it's going to track the way the controller is in 3D space and it's going to put those moves on the screen. And what will these mean for games such as Little Big Planet and first person shooters? Well, the cool thing about Move is that it's meant to be very precise and take all of those actions, allow you to do things in games that you normally wouldn't be able to do, whether it's, you know, spinning around to pull off a cool move. For SOCOM 4, the way that I've seen it presented so far is very much like a light gun shooter. You'd be pointing at the screen, pointing at the enemies that you want to shoot. But Nintendo has another trick up their sleeve. Ever since Avatar jumped out of theater screens last year, it's all about 3D technology these days. So of course, Nintendo will be announcing a handheld 3D gaming device. I think it's going to look a lot like a Nintendo DS. It's going to have the dual screens. But these are going to be arthroscopic, meaning you don't need to wear glasses or have any other kind of interface between you and the machine. And you're going to see it in 3D, which is pretty sweet. With the emerging tech being revealed this summer, we'll be here to fill you in as we head down the road to E3. Like a monster rising from off the Japanese shore, E3 is back, and this year it's got laser eyes. Thankfully, G4's coverage has grown a tough Scaly hide, and this year it'll be the largest in network history. You know why? Because every year that's what we do, and that's what we say. Yeah! We are upping it to a brilliant 25 hours of live coverage, including the Sony, Nintendo, Ubisoft, and EA press conferences. Oh, and uh, broadcast exclusive for you guys. Uh, yes. The Valve press conference. We've got it. And, and tell them why, why it's so, so great. Well, the world premiere Portal 2. Yes. <laughs> triumph. This was a triumph. Want to Portal? See no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? This was a trial. Don't miss E3 2010 live in HD presented by Burger King. Coverage starts June 14th only on G4. Visit g4g.com slash E3 for details. Stay tuned. Nestor Carbonell probably just walked away.
This gymnast is using a trampoline to jump into this foam pit. So what happens next? Does he pull off the jump but land on his head? Does he go flying into the wall? Or does the trampoline just break? Find out when we return. This gymnast is using a trampoline to jump into this foam pit. So what happens next? Does he pull off the jump but land on his head? Does he go flying into the wall? Or does the trampoline just break? Yay, nice try! You're off the team. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> last Tuesday on Lost, uh, this happened. Thank you for having me. That smoke monster is not gentle. No, not at all. That was a, a, a throat punch what? by a, a, I know. a smoke monster. I know. And it seems to be a trend. I mean, Locke hit me with a, you know, a throat punch in the beginning <laughs> of the season. Now it's a smoke monster. I wish the Undertaker would come out right now and just give you one as well. Like just a, I think I'm good. He throat punches <laughs> potentially better than the smoke monster. But let's get to the biggest question that we're getting, of course, on Twitter. It's the one that I wanted to ask. Nova Sonic 13, the real, real talk. Uh -huh. And uh, sure. Damon Martin, <laughs> along with a thousand other people, wanted to know... Did you die just then? Are you okay? Do you live from something like that? Yes. You, you do live? No. No, maybe, you... Maybe. I don't know. Oh, here, <laughs> here comes the last uh, tap dance. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's ABC there's the answer. Everywhere here. I mean, I'm going to get... Nobody is repelling from Listen, the lighting grid to it, silence you. There's, there's not an elite saw, team of, no, of agents. I saw the Call of Duty video. Something like that. <laughs> no, the, uh... No, I'm, I, you know, I, we have to do the tap dance. I mean, and f the real fans don't really want to know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know. It's come on, a couple more days. You think, <laughs> you think the real fans don't want to know? They, they want to know in the moment. They want to know, then they want to complain for a week that, that they, they knew know, and know. that it was spoiled. <laughs> That's exactly what they want. It's true. Um, so were you there on the, like the last day of filming, last scene for the well, finale? Well, if I told you that, then that would give it away. Wouldn't <laughs> all right, all right. Kinda, come on. But what was, come what was, what was the, what was it like at that moment though? Like when they, when they call rap when you're on the set. My, my last day. Uh, <laughs> all right, now forget it then. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was hard. Listen, we were talking before. It's it's definitely bittersweet for me. Right. I mean, I just joined the show as a regular this year, and it's been you know the experience of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and my family's there, my kids are there. You know, it's going to be hard to move back. You know, although LA is great, but you know, paradise. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, and and. Well, what can you you can't you can't now find uh, another industry, another gig out there? I mean, we're talking maybe a sugar plantation. Maybe or uh, pineapple. Sugar cane? Pineapple would that work could, as well. Work, yes, I could maybe you know get into that business. But uh, no, I was looking. You know, I mean, Hawaii Five O. I looked around. <laughs> Da Daniel Day Kim nixed that one for me. Man! Uh, I was looking for anything and everything. It's but time to pack up the U-Haul then, pretty unfortunately. Much, yes. um, but we, we learned recently uh, your character's backstory, uh, yeah. which is, I mean, it's crazy. It's quite the tangled web, but did you even know? No. You, no? <laughs> like, I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know what happens in the... Actually, you know what? I, we're, I was given the finale script, and this, uh, this uh, I will tell you. Really? I've read 10 of the 11 acts, because they only gave me 10 acts. So I don't even know how the thing ends. How did how did the ten acts arrive? Was it in a uh, a case that was you know handcuffed to a to a guy in a suit? Or? It, it, may, it may as well have, but it's uh, there were red pages, so you can't uh, photocopy. You know, so they're, they're very smart, and you have to be there to receive the script. Really, and every page has your name, you know, plastered on it, you know, on every single page, so you, you can't disseminate it on the internet. So it's uh, no, it's pretty. You know, this non-disclosure thing is is, is a pretty right. serious thing. But to not even disclose your character's history, I mean, as an actor, don't you sort of need to know where he's coming from or what? Or do you go like, ah, oh, now he's from Boston and he used to sell carpet. You know, okay, great, that's, that's my backstory. Yeah, no, listen, it, you're right. Going into the show, I, I never worked this way. Mm -hmm. But I got to say, to me, it's been the best exercise. Because it keeps you honest and you keep, you know, you just sort of, sort of keep inventing your own reality. Right. And, you know, of course, I guess, completely wrong. But, you know, <laughs> right. But, but it was a great exercise. It really was, it was a special treat. But now, when I got the script, I was like, wow, I get to ride horses and I got the long hair and the beard and I'm from, you know, the Canary Islands. You're and, set. You know, and yeah. then you'd shave, and you're ready for an Old Spice commercial. There you go. You have, you have all the requirements. Well, thank you. Uh, tropical setting, horse. Uh, now, are you, I, I've asked everybody that, that, that's, that I've chat to, chatted with recently from Lost, uh, the memorabilia, the, the keepsakes. Oh. Uh, what are you going to take away physically 
from the set? Uh, you know, I, I learned my lesson for, about, you mean like the stealing something on the set? Sure, or, yeah. Why not? I mean, <laughs> well, no, there's an auction coming up, right? There's an auction. I, I was going to maybe bid on a compass. There's a compass that, I, that uh, belongs to Locke. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, they belong to me, that he gives to me in, in uh, you know, last, last year when we were tra time traveling. That has some meaning. But I kind of learned my lesson about taking stuff. I, years ago, I did a show called uh, The Tick, this thing. For, yeah. for, hey. Hey. Wow. That's the, this is the right audience. Very nice. Thank this is the right you. audience for that. It was, uh, thank you, one of my favorite experiences. But I had just done Suddenly Susan, uh, the comedy for NBC, and, uh, and I was flying to New York to do press for The Tick. And mm -hmm. flying back, they, they were airing episodes of Suddenly Susan. And sure enough, which is an awkward thing as an actor. You're on a plane, and then the episode comes right. up. And you're, right, right. And you're, in it. you're yeah. like, this is kind of weird. And but you hear somebody complain about the in flight entertainment. You're ready exactly to smoke, it. punch them in the throat. <laughs> smoke, exactly. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, but, you know, but I thought, oh, why not? I'll just tune in. I'll just, you know, so I put the earphones on, and, and all of a sudden, I come on screen. And then this guy, like across the aisle, just went up, you know, looks up and looks back at me. And he goes, and I go, it's, Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's me, me. it's me. It? Okay. Yeah. Right, exactly. And then he goes, No, no, you're wearing the same sweater. <laughs> No, I kid you not. Did you really steal the sweater from Suddenly Susan? I know. And then I denied it. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I did. I stole And then, and then all the, a, a number of people look back and they go, no, yeah, you are wearing this. And I'm like, oh, I am wearing this. The whole plane's in it at that point. Pretty much. So that's, well, that was pretty embarrassing. I, I think uh, you, you deserve the compass. I hope you get it, oh, sir. Thank you. And, uh, and best of luck with the pineapple plantation as well. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. Always a pleasure thank you so much. With you. Thanks appreciate for coming on, that, sir. Thank you. Uh, you guys, Lost ends its epic run this Sunday on ABC. But right now, going over to Mon. Thanks, guys. We are going to show you how to jailbreak your iPad up next. Yeah! Quarantines were made to be voided. Note that. The ability to make music on your iPhone is nothing new. But with Everyday Looper, the power of multi-touch makes recording even easier. Everyday Looper, Everyday Looper, Everyday Looper, Everyday Looper. Using various finger taps and swiping combos, this app gives you complete playing control over your sounds, making it easy to compose masterpieces on the fly. With four available tracks and a metronome to make sure your rhythm is on the beat, Everyday Looper also comes with a quantize function, allowing you to start and stop your next loop automatically, which totally frees up your hands. Use the merge function, which lets you combine multiple tracks together with a quick vertical swipe. This will give you space for more sounds to layer over and create a virtually infinite amount of tracks. It also comes with a navigator so you can save your sets onto your computer and play them back for your friends. All of this for just $4.99 in the App Store. Coming up tomorrow on AOTS, Bridget Regan from Legend of the Seeker joins us in studio and we take a look at our future life together. Spoiler, we have lots of babies. Plus, grab your donkey and a flashlight because Morgan's here with the biggest games of the week, Red Dead Redemption and Alan Wake in Game Break. And we'll take you into the secret lives of Cobra agents in an AOTS classic. See it tomorrow. To look like Angelina Jolie to be a hacker if Aww. you watch. It means that it means that you can you can be a, a hacker if you if you watch hacker. Can this. I still look like Angelina Jolie? If you want. Apple's tight control of the iTunes App Store means that some of the best apps and games for the iPad might never see the light of day. That means no customizing, no multitasking, no emulators, and no porn? Well, if you jailbreak your iPad, you can have all that and more right now. So what's jailbreaking? Well, it's a process that removes the iPad's built-in locks, giving you the freedom to install and run any application without restrictions. Be warned that there is some light hacking involved. You'll be voiding your warranty, and you run the very real risk of breaking your iPad. That means rendering it inoperable. So sync your iPad to iTunes and back up any important data before you start. If you've heard enough and want to take the plunge, visit spiritjb.com and download Spirit, the free application that makes all of this possible. Connect your iPad to a Mac or PC, run the Spirit application, and click the big jailbreak button. Yeah, that's it. Once your iPad reboots, the screen will update to show a progress bar. Back on your home screen, everything should look the same, but with one small change. You now have an application called Cydia. This is your new App Store. But don't worry, the iTunes App Store still works for purchasing and downloading approved apps. 
Simply launch Cydia and you're ready to snag some very cool apps and utilities, including game emulators, theme changers, and more. Many are free, but just like the iTunes App Store, some of the best are paid apps. If you think it's worth the risk of turning your iPad into an expensive paperweight, there's a whole new world of applications waiting for you, and all thanks to the magic of jailbreaking. Yay! Here's a jailbroken iPad. It's a jailbroken iPad. Look at this iPad. It done broke right out of jail. That's a fun song. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's the official jailbreak song. I like it. It's not. Uh, now let's get to the fun part, which of course are the applications. Our first one is Winterboard. This will let you customize all of your icons, every ounce of the appearance. Uh, there's tons of themes available for download on Cydia right now. And as you can see, you tap it, you tap again, you tap one mole, you tap a tap, and you wait for the sideways apple to turn into a beautiful unlock screen. Oh. And then you unlock that beautiful screen, and bam, snazzle! You done customized your iPad. Yes. Now even though there will uh, soon be an official way to multitask, you can actually do it right now with Backgrounder. What? So listen to this. You load your first app, uh -huh. Pandora. Okay, I'm on board. Then double tap the status bar. I hear what you're saying? Okay, and Pandora continues to run in the background. Dig it, princess. So then you can listen while you use other apps. Mm. And what it does is it shows an icon on the app so you know it's backgrounded. Groove. Now obviously, okay, um, obviously this works for all other apps, so uh, no more constantly relaunching. How about that, huh? Stank nasty. What is wrong with I you? I don't know. Our last one is a Super Nintendo emulator. It costs $5.99. Yeah. Here's the thing. It will play Super dude, Nintendo dude, ROMs. Dude, dude, um, dude, dude, we're dude. obviously playing not that game, a a homebrew one called Airwolf, which pew, pew, pew. oddly enough in Airwolf you Shoot. control a tank, which is a ground-based vehicle. But hey, there you go. Um, you can play all sorts of legal ROMs uh, and illegal ones, like Super Mario Kart and Street Fighter 2 work uh, just as well. There's a built-in Bluetooth support for the Wiimote. Uh, it's got everything you'd want. Most of these jailbroken apps are made for the iPhone, but the iPad versions are appearing as well. So just give it a little time, guys. All right, everybody, go to g42.com slash AOTS for all the things you saw today and more. I want to thank Nestor Carbonell for being so damn pleasant. I want to thank... Uh, Candace. Candace yes, for, for being some feed. Being awesome. And thank you, Olivia, no, for being thank here. Thank you for accepting me back. Good night.